and they're, they're hoping to share in that and experience something different than being here. I think they just wanted to get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike Christianity, the beliefs of Australia's first people are based on their relationship to the land and the ancestor spirits who created it. This focus on the land allowed Aboriginal nations to remain unbroken for 40,000 years. Back in the valley, the lack of men provides a chance for the women to let their hair down. It's the first day we've had in 85 days um, where we're not the catering department. Sure or not today? We decided we're having a day off. So we had biscuits for lunch and we're having um, foot massages and facials in the afternoon. <laughs> and the younger girls are gone bush for the day and the night. Susan and Shelley and Rachel. There's no men around. And we're very depressed about that. <laughs> no, we're, no, no, we're not depressed, no, we're... Um, it's very it's, nice. It's very calm around here today. And it's wonderful. Well, mine have got the shits. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think they'll be doing very well at all. Um, they've, they've had a bad stomach for a couple of days now, so we've just packed them off with bread and uh, a couple of blankets and you know not a lot of sympathy really i've just sent them off anyway but it'll be, it's certainly Can't something new to go off father and son you know a group of fathers and sons it's an interesting Why? concept i think you know yeah. and mothers and daughters could do it too no problem as long as there was shopping at the end of it is it not mm -hmm. you've changed your stamina make sure everyone watch their foot and the walking party is now travelling into an area known as men's ground. Aboriginal women would have respected customary law and stayed well clear of here. To venture onto this ground would be to invite serious retribution. Jalo, he was he's interested in this trip, and I hope it gets through to him that um, he's got to have a lot of respect for this land too, because this is part of his culture and his culture should mean a lot to him and, and if he hasn't got that respect for his culture he hasn't got respect for mother earth or anybody i think it's a good experience living out here of knowing how our ancestors used to live and making gunyas and drinking out of a creek and hunting. Always had to hunt like every day to get food so it'd be fresh. And then this will be the initiation site, I'd say. Elders would bring young men to this sacred place as a step on the path towards initiation, the most significant event in their young lives. The grooves in here. Out of respect for traditional law, the carvings in this rock cannot be shown on camera. Can you look at it from there? That one is like an animal, spread eagle. This site was in continuous use until the Dark and Jung people were forced off their land. And that's the ground you don't tramp on. As long as you tramp on that, uh, your spirits can hurt you. See, for us walking past that, we'd never even mm. have a clue That's what right. they were or, or anything. Yeah. We would, though, wouldn't just walk yeah. straight by. It's a, a ritual place where the elders in the tribe would bring their sons and how they would be taught what it would be like for a boy to become a man. The respect for the elders respect for the land and respect for one another. Well, we're here, Anto, and we've got a fire and we've got a cup of tea. See how easy it was to keep 
to set up camp with no woman around? Oh, <laughs> mate. Hey? Yeah. Drop the dead donkey. Weird. <laughs> Lots of words. <laughs> I've got seven words. Digger. Back in the valley, the women enjoy a game of charades, fueled by cheap rum. Lizzie Thomas! <laughs> Dirty dancing! You're a psycho! <laughs> While convict Andy revels in his role as man of the house. I'm out of drink. Seconds. I, I, I just hope they're having a bit of fun. Yeah, they should and be. Watch the they should be. <laughs> if the men are having fun, they're keeping it to themselves. The experience of the sacred site seems to have put them in a reflective mood. We're here in this valley and there's that many things that did happen with the Aboriginals actually here. That there is, well, there will be definitely a lot of feelings. And I, th I think I did feel something. And I still am feeling something. It's, it's a strange place. With Anto away, Lorna and the Aboriginal girls feel safer spending the night at the Honkies. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how they're going up there, though. They'll be all around the fire now. You worry about him up there? No. Men's ground. You tell me what I'm talking about. Oh, they're feeling frightened here. What are they? Lorna has always felt the presence of spirits very strongly in the valley. Because um, sometimes some ghost or something comes around. That's a yeah, isn't it, Abby? Yeah, there's some. The next morning, the men suspect something untoward is happening back in the valley. I wonder what's happened back there. I think something will have happened. I Definitely. Yeah. And they're right. Three girls have been missing for over 24 hours. Convicts Shelley and Rachel and the Hurley's 18-year-old daughter, Susan. Well, three girls just decided yesterday to, um, all of a sudden, to just go bush, as they said. She said, up the hill to stay the night because there was a full moon. And I said, well, how far are you going? She said, no, we're not going very far because uh, we'll only get lost. And I'll be back early in the morning for my breakfast. So that's why I'm worried, because she specifically said, I'll be back early. A bowl of porridge, I reckon, Dickie. Yeah, I'll settle for porridge. The men return from their trek to discover that convicts Kevin and Barney are missing as well as the three girls. It turns out all five of them swam the river and trekked for two hours to the shops and back Hello. to the 21st century. Five people, Kevin and Barney as well. Well, I'm very extremely annoyed over that because when we came out here as a family, we decided that um, we weren't going to cheat at this, that we were going to do it. We all agreed to do that and I didn't want them to cheat. I want them to do it and be able to walk out of here at the end of it and say, well, we, did, we gave it our best shot. That's it. Yeah, I'm a bit, a bit fed now? up now. I want to find out first of all what happened. I'd be more than disappointed. The three runaway girls are brought back to face the music. We did the wrong thing, but I don't th I don't, we didn't go to the shops to go to the shops. It was more the adventure of just going out and doing something different. It wasn't... I don't think there was a desire to, to eat food or whatever. It was just... We were bored. We were idle. I feel <clears throat> like a total loser for leaving when everybody else stuck it out. I just felt crap and it seemed like a good idea at the time. We didn't think it through at all. Um, 
I regret it now, but I, it was just a stupid idea. <laughs> and I'm really, really sorry for making everybody worried. I'm really ashamed of myself. This is probably a bad thing to say. The only regret I have is is making Morris and Trish worry about Susan. But I don't regret doing it because I had fun. I enjoyed myself. <laughs> so. Well, um, we all make mistakes. Susan made a mistake. Uh, not the who or the why or the where, that's important. It's really how you learn from that or what you do in response to that. That's what's important. I just, I needed to apologize to Declan and Deirdre and Kate as well, because I feel like I let them down. And I have to say that when I was out having the adventure, I didn't enjoy it because I kept thinking about you guys <laughs> back here eating porridge. <laughs> <laughs> what's the what's the deal like true convicts kev and barney deny everything despite being seen at the shops with the girls we don't know nothing about nothing they'd, they'd speak in code word about where they're going they wouldn't call it the shops obviously because had to just be done so they, they'd say they're going just they'd call it like they just call it going to the bush, going bush. <laughs> so I'd have a fair idea where they're going and what they're doing, but wouldn't really know because I never went there. Got offered a few times, but just didn't take it up because I didn't see the point. The Stevenson's convicts, Andy and Shelley, couldn't be more different. While Andy has thrown himself into the colony experience, Shelley's workload was reduced because she was pregnant when she arrived, but she still proved unreliable. The only job that Shelley really had to do, we really cut her chores down, what, do the evening tea. And sometimes if Liz did a stew in the morning, she wouldn't even have to do an evening tea because a mm. stew would last morning and evening tea. And then when it's her turn, she just she wouldn't just turn, turn up. up. And she's walked over the valley and swam over the river yeah. and walked for two hours to go to the shop. Or however long. That's... Do you know what I mean? Just feel it, feel like my time is up. <laughs> and I'm... Yeah. I don't know. Emotional. Homesick. <laughs> for convict Shelley Williams, the experience is over. In the early 1800s, being pregnant and single could have seen her end up in the female factory at Parramatta, which housed convict women deemed unsuitable for domestic work. Yeah, I feel pretty, um, pretty good about being the, the only surviving convict to, um, to not break any of the rules. I think the rest of them were a bit weaker than myself. <laughs> they just couldn't hack it. Of the nine convicts who started in the colony, only four remain, and three of them have succumbed to the temptations of the 21st century. Yeah. Proclamation. 1st of January, 1810. 1810. A proclamation announces the arrival of Governor Macquarie and the end of the New South Wales cause corrupt and often vindictive regime. Majesty to express his high displeasure at the arrest and With the mutinous regiment shipped back to Britain, the new governor restored support to Hawkesbury settlers. Count anymore. So our stores are back. So we're getting our stores back. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> With full bellies once again, the keen horse riders in the colony are given a chance to strike out west like the early explorers. It's just great to be here. My teeth are chattering with excitement. It's absolutely wonderful to be out of the valley. It's exciting. 
really is. Wow, Eddie. Macquarie's governorship was dynamic and expansive. During his leadership, settlers tried to find a way across the rugged Blue Mountains, which had proved a barrier to the expansion of the colony. Early explorers had made the mistake of following the valleys until stopped by massive cliffs. No, it's not the farm, no. In the end, Aboriginal trackers showed them the way across by following the ridges. You're looking for landmarks, aren't you? So we don't get lost. All I'm seeing is trees. The Gunungurra people had been walking the Blue Mountains trails for thousands of years. It's pretty scary. There's so much bush. Well, all we've known is just one valley, so I'm sure it was, it was pretty intimidating for the, the settlers coming out looking for land. It's just when you get on the high point, 360 all the way around is bush, so which way do you go to find something? Twenty-seven years after the first fleet, a convict chain gang finally hacked a road across the mountains. The floodgates for white settlement of the vast interior were thrown wide open. actually got time to talk and, I, and you yeah. see the people's real personalities as well I've just seen more fun more laughter more enjoyment not as much stress because there's a lot of stress with what we've actually been through in the past three months a hell of a lot of pressure put on me put on Kerry put on the adults as well I think we've had a lot of pressure put on us for sure we're trying to adapt our family That's to right. a different environment yeah. get to know convicts yeah. get to know other families and it's, it's been, it has been a strain. How about that big one I caught? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done, <Anne. laughs> I did. There's now only two days to go. The horse riders have returned and a last supper is being prepared. The honkies have given up a pig for the feast. Everyone is invited to their place, where they shared their first meal over three months ago. Tuck his legs in. Put these feet in there. The change from the honkies has been dramatic on their side too. Suddenly, they're talking to everybody. They're very friendly, very talkative very wanting to share, very wanting to befriend us. And I just can't understand what has changed. It's been so dramatic, the shift. It's been unbelievable. Now, we will go to this, and it's a very nice invite and everything, yeah. but that hasn't been a true reflection of what it's been like. And what a shame it wasn't like that earlier on. First of all, guys, it's nice to see us all gathered here together, and I'd like to... Welcome us all here, back to the very first meal we had together in the colony. Most of us hang together. We've lost a few on the way, but the strong survive. Hooray! Yay! Before the feast, Anto seizes the opportunity to make an unexpected announcement. Excuse me, everyone. Uh, I'd like to say something here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Would you take my hand in marriage? Oh. 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 Lorna! Down on your knees, Anton. Yeah, get up. That's not a problem. Uh, no, 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 no,
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anto and Lorna were teenage sweethearts who lost touch for 20 years, but found each other again two years ago. All right. Shall we all go and have a feast, a farewell feast together? Can you just sit and talk to them? Do you want some more? I'd like to have a thing. give a special thanks to Barn at the start. He's one hell of a convict. And our late Keo, wherever he may be resting at the moment. He's still in the hills. With the end in sight, the very real tensions which divided the settlement seem to melt away, prompting some regrets about the last 14 weeks. It was just so much better that the atmosphere was great. Everybody was enjoying each other's company and, you know, uh, Trish, Liz and myself sort of went off and had a bit of fun together and, you know, we were having a really good time and you sort of wish that that had happened a bit earlier in the piece and could have formed totally different relationships with, with the people instead of really not having much time now to develop it a bit more. Um, even though there's been some shocking times and we've all handled it quite badly, at least we're all leaving on good terms. There have been about 30 people here in the valley. And for the most part, we all got on really well together. There's only been one or two people here that haven't really gotten on with the rest of us. So, I mean, I think that's fantastic after three months of hard times. <laughs> For the first month or so, um, I just found it really difficult watching this project going on around me. And um, so eventually I put a structure on it. And here's the structure, I'll give you the structure, right? So you take three men who are not farmers or builders and you put them in a field with their wives and their kids. And you tell them to build a house and a chuck pen and a goat pen and a pig pen and you tell them to dig a well and you tell them that they've got a month to do it and then you throw in a few things like bad tools difficult materials the nail bends it's like steel and you throw in some convicts who are single men and then you add in some bad weather and you take away sleep, fresh food, sex, music, entertainment, clean clothes, fresh water, all the things that we need, that we, we just take for granted. You take all of those away. And then you, what you want to find out is how do these three men fare out? And then more bullshit happening. You might just have to bite the bit and work a bit harder if that's the problem. Shut up, will you? Shut the f up, will you? And when you look at it with that structure, then it's not a bit surprising that it was so stressful and so difficult, and it was. Soon, our colonists will be leaving the valley forever, and it's beginning to sink in. <laughs> oh, you look clean. Ready for the big day. I'm most proud of the house. That's what I'm most proud of. But, but then again, equally, I'm most proud of my kids. They've become more responsible, they've become more thoughtful, um, more considerate. You know, um, 
I am really proud of them. Yeah. She got white dresses. Mm -hmm. I suppose getting on with with everyone I'm proud of because there's been a lot of social tensions and we've never fell out with anyone, so I suppose I'm proud of that as well. Um, when I get out, I'm really, really looking forward to eating loads of chocolate and ice cream and no more stew. Oh, stew still good. No, no more stew. Only proper stew, but no more of this kind of stew. Um, I'm looking forward to coys. No. And, oh, I am. Spicy things and just different flavours like any chocolate flavours or strawberries or fruit, bananas, watermelons. Watermelons are good. Bananas uh, are better. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. no. It has been a fantastic experience. I mean, going back in time is just an amazing experience. And then being locked up with your own family and just a few other people is a different sort of uh, experience. It's just taking time out of your life and doing something totally different. Um, and I think it'll change your, my perspective on a lot of things. I have discovered that I have the best dad in the world. He's so understanding and I can't believe I'm crying. <laughs> I'm such a loser. Um, just when I came back from my expedition with the convicts, he was so forgiving. He was just so nice to me. And I expected him to kick my ass so hard. But he just said it's fine. We all make mistakes. And I just just the best dad ever. I, I don't think you could go through something like this and come out of it at the other end without me thinking about, you know, taking stock. I was always too afraid of not being accepted or not being liked or whatever. Now it's, look, this is it. Like it or lump it. So um, when I go back, I think I'll, I'll, I'll make a few changes there, certainly. And that you know, it's like it or lump it, you know. Uh, it's, it might, you might find it difficult to <laughs> go home. <laughs> the comic days are over and um, back to being a slave to some other bugger outside in the real world, I suppose. Oh, yeah, we, we've been counting down the days. Mm. Get us out of here quick. It'll certainly be different when you get back, sort of, just, especially even seeing cars go past and phones ringing and everything. Yeah, I'm kind of glad I stuck it out, but I still would have liked to leave sooner. a place here. And being parents, it's sort of, um, it's quite an ideal lifestyle. <laughs> it's very, very family orientated and that's sort of what we've been chasing. I've got mixed emotions, really, this morning. When I woke up, I was really, really sad. When I think back of what we've actually done and what we've been through, then I start getting really sad and, you know, quite emotional. Because it has been definitely a roller coaster ride all the way through. I don't really want to leave. I'd definitely like to stay. I can see it being, if this were real, without the threat of the room core or anything changing, it'd be such an idyllic, beautiful life to have with your family, I think, to actually be self-sufficient. 
and live off the land and everything. It would be so good. Mm. Although people say, oh, you can't, you, you tied more to the cook pot. You might be for that meal or for a little bit, you know, an hour longer than you would have been at home. But at home, we just try to cram so much more into, into life that you're rushing about a lot of the time like a lunatic trying yeah. to fit everything in and you don't need to you really don't need to i think it's going to really change our lives when we get back but yeah it's um it's funny feelings and i thought i might have been a bit more pulled together today but i'm not I'm going to feel leaving the land. It's hard for me to say, but I'm going to miss this land. Because uh, this land sort of grew in me now. And I don't really want to leave. If I had my way, I'd stay. Because it's, it's just like home now to me. It really made us think about the 1800s and how our people was treated, how they survived, and the reason why they went on walkabouts to another place. To me, seeing that I'd done it, so I can go back and tell even Dad and Mum what it was like in those days. I just wish Grandma was alive today to see this, you know? Goodbye, house. Bye, house. I love that house. We're there for another 50, no, another 100 years, that house. And we'll come back in 20 years' time and have another couple of weeks there. Oh, Mum, don't, oh, don't start crying. I'm not, I'm all right. It's cold. Well, yeah. Is it? Is it silent? Yeah. No way. <laughs> It's going to be all right, Tyler, mate. Don't worry, Tyler. You'll pull through. You'll pull through this. Queen of filth will be of no more. <laughs> <laughs> 